Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Nealon from Oceana Scientific Services, and welcome to an introduction to data analysis in R. This is a great series for beginners as we work through from data creation, setup in R, visualization, and of course, some analysis. I have over 10 years experience using R in my research. I have a background in biogeochemistry, so I've looked at lots of data sets filled with biological, chemical and physical parameters in relation to water, soil and plant material. Uh, from this background, I'll be teaching you and stepping you through how to use R in an applied manner. Uh, in this first clip of this series, we'll be looking at data and ordered analysis. This is the bits you think about and write outside of R. With data analysis, it is an iterative process where we first of all have to develop a research question. We need to acquire some data which matches this question. We need to be able to visualize what we'd like answered perform an analysis and then create an interpretation. This interpretation, if done correctly, will answer our original question. Each step is important and must be done correctly for the whole circle to be tied together. Often you'll find you have to repeat steps to make sure you get a coherent flow through the question, data, visualize, analyze and interpret loop. Let's have a look at what these separate steps are. First, your research question. It's important to be clear and concise. There can often be embedded questions and sub-questions, but you need to know the hierarchy and what matters the most. Make sure you've first defined what your research aims and objectives are. What do you actually want to know and what was of most value to your project? Um, why would you like to know this? Often the why could impact on what the question itself is. How many questions do you need answered? And what's their level of importance, as I mentioned? Part two is the data. So the questions that you've formulated will now inform what data you'll collect. This is very important as data collection can be costly. And so you need to make sure that you're collecting the appropriate parameters you need to answer your question and potential sub-questions. What this looks like can vary. You may already have some data which has been collected prior to your project. This often can be incorporated and potentially used for additional analysis and to make sure your analysis is more informative. Uh, the data you have may be notes. It could be existing government data sets. It may be in CSV files or exported from an instrument. In R, we can bring this all together into one place. So as you can see from this flow diagram, we can have handwritten notes, collected Excel files, exported CSV files, and they may all enter into R using different codes. Now this part matters because how you're importing your data into R will change. Let me give you a little example. Here are three boxes showing some R scripts. You'll notice in the first script, um, we actually are creating the data set inside of R and we have some general parameters we know about our system. We know minimum, maximums and we have a, a range. In the second box, we however only have two values. We just know about two single fish and their lengths. So quite a small entering in specific values against their descriptor. In the third, we're just bringing in a whole CSV file which already is populated with data. Understanding that the data you have will affect the script you produce is important. This is why you can't simply copy and paste your prior scripts um, in for future analyses. And every script must be built up to match the question and data that you're looking into. Next, we have to visualize. So if we've correctly made a nice clear question and we've collected the correct data to answer this question, we can now perform a plot. What your plot will look like will again depend on what information is available to you. You can see some examples here of box plots. 
versus um, some temporal scatter plots showing trend lines. If you realize the output you need is a forecast or a prediction, often producing box plots won't be particularly useful. And so again, at this point, if you realize your output won't match what your question was, you may need to reformulate the last two steps. And finally, we're getting through to analysis. If this is all matching and well together, you'll now be able to potentially predict something that may be going to occur in your system, see how significantly different your treatments are, describe your system accurately. Let's have a look at what these sort of analyses could be. So we have descriptive, predictive, inferential, and exploratory. Often, if you have a large data set, you may use all four of these. If you have a very small data set, you may be able to go no further than a simple description. It will depend upon how much data you could collect and again what your question was. Finally, once we've analysed the data, we can then make an interpretation. What does this all mean? When would it be applied? Maybe your treatments were significantly different, but there could have been another factor which created this. And maybe your interpretation is further research is needed to really understand if this phenomena would occur. The interpretation part is very important and should be done in the context of wider literature and other studies. And again, if it's linking up correctly, it should match in perfectly with what your research question was. If these steps are done correctly, you can also make sure your interpretation is actionable. What would this mean for stakeholder groups? What would this mean for your business? What would this mean for the company you're working within? to make sure that you are giving an interpretation that can result in some change occurring. In your scripts, when we do load R after the next session, we'll start to set our scripts up to show the three stages of data, visualization and analysis. By keeping the sections clear, you can make sure each is done correctly and therefore feeds into a nice loop between your question to your interpretation. Uh, I hope you enjoy this series um, and thank you for watching your first clip. You can visit my website to download all slide materials, R scripts and more.